Hey, good morning, powerhouses. Pastor Noel here, and it's a, a great opportunity to fellowship with you this morning. It is Father's Day, so happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. We celebrate the Lord with you. Uh, it is a sacred responsibility to be a father, and uh, I, I am learning so much from uh, that responsibility. And today, uh, we're going to continue our conversation on race and racism, and we want to talk about uh, how to engage your children, how to have the conversation on race and racism with your children. And I'm here with Pastor Rob. Pastor Rob, hey. Hey. How are you, buddy? I'm good. How are you? Yeah. Happy Father's Day. Yeah. Happy Father's Day. Yeah. It's a good day. It's a great day, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, maybe just introduce yourself. I'm sure, you know, Powerhouse knows you, but we also have, uh, you know, a uh, People who are watching from literally sure. all over the world, I Absol think. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know. Yeah. 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 I, love seeing, uh, I love seeing the chats every Sunday during the service and yeah. just seeing where all the people from yeah. are from that yeah. uh, are engaging with us. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm Pastor Rob. I, you know, you usually see me with a guitar in my hands, um, and I love to do that and do the worship on Sunday mornings. Uh, you may know if you've been following us online for the past couple of months where we're doing the online thing, I'm the uh, not so, I'm the lesser of the worship team or lesser of the popular worship team, that's a better way to put it, uh, than you usually see on Sunday mornings. It's funny, I, I've noticed as we've been doing the online services, when my daughter, yeah. Hope, who yeah. is eight, when she sings in the worship team, there is significantly better attendance yes. and interaction on the worship than when she's not there. That's so interesting. we're wow. making sure to get her in. I apologize that she wasn't in there today. Yeah. Uh, her contract stipulates that she's only uh, available every okay. other week. So oh, we're trying okay. to negotiate that, but she's okay. a tough negotiator. So, <laughs> But anyway, I, I do have um, two kids. I yes. have a daughter, Hope, who I just talked about, uh, who is eight. And I have a son, Nathan, who is 10 now. And, uh, you know, just kind of to explain where this conversation came yeah, from, you know, yeah. we were talking in our pastor's meeting uh, a few weeks ago and just trying to wrap our, our minds around what are the things that we should be addressing uh, yeah. in this in this season, because obviously we don't want to be silent. Yeah. We want to make yeah. sure that we press in in a God-honoring way. And uh, as we were talking about those things, kind of just something that stirred in all of our hearts was that, you know, no matter who you are, no matter what age and stage you're in, you're experiencing this moment in our world and in our culture. Yeah. Uh, there's no escaping it and no avoiding it. And so we felt like, especially because where I'm at with, with my kids and, and your kids, and, and we're all in different stages, but we felt like it would be so important for us to just take some time and really unpack what it looks like to address these topics and have these conversations uh, with our kids. Because I don't know about you, but I'm totally unprepared when it comes to having it is, these uh, conversations. It is, it is, it is, uh, it is, it is a very interesting uh, season that we find yes. ourselves in. I mean, I have, uh, I have four children ages between 24 and 16. And so they are, uh, they are asking questions. So for me to have the conversations is not, it's not whether I should have the conversations. Yes. It's, it's, it's inevitable. Yes. It's like, it's, I'm, I'm asking more how I should have the conversations, yes. that we must have the conversations. And, uh, um, I, I, our, I am, um, I would call my marriage an intertribal marriage mm. coming from Kenya. Uh, Kenya has 42 tribes, very distinct, yeah. distinct in language, distinct in culture, distinct in music and food, just different. And so uh, I married a, uh, from a tribe that, you know, uh, my tribe looked down upon, hmm. like we felt like we were superior and they're inferior. And I remember just, you know, during that process of even dating uh, my girlfriend then, who is now my wife, there were just challenges that both families had to go through wow. to, yeah. So my wife, uh, if some of you uh, know her, Rhoda, she's, she's half Dutch white and half black, uh, wow. a different tribe. Uh, and uh, our kids are, I, I said they have a sprinkle of white in them. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, we have a, a, the, it's, it's, it, their colors are from black to brown. Mm. Yeah, it's like we have every color in my house. So, it's, so the, the issues of race and tribal and uh, uh, diversity conversations are conversations we've always had. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. I, it's interesting because, like, as I was thinking through, uh, like, just, just the conversation and even just hearing you share that, you know, I think for so many of us, it tends to swing on, yeah. on the pendulum, right? And I think for me and my family, we, we were born and raised in New Jersey. Um, we, are, we are white Americans, right? Yeah. Like this, is, yeah. this is where our roots are. And, and so the conversation looks completely different yeah. at our dinner table as it does at your dinner table. It's completely, right? yeah, I can only imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. And yeah. I, think, I think that for me, as I was just really thinking and praying through uh, what it looks like to have these conversations, I think that's important for all of us to understand yeah, yeah. that no, there is no playbook for yeah. this. There is no one size fits all conversation that we can have with our families because no family is the same. No. Right? So every, and every child, the way yeah. that they process, the way that they uh, internalize, the way that they verbalize all the, and communicate all of these things, it's always going to look different. Yeah. And yeah. so I think for some of us, maybe it's important for us to recognize that it's okay, that it's going to look different different and it's going to look sometimes messy to have the conversation like again I, I think through some of the conversations that my family's been having at the dinner table and I would walk away from some of them thinking I probably just made that a million times worse you yeah. know because it's <laughs> like I don't I don't I'm not qualified to talk about these things I'm not uh, an expert in how to handle these things and address these things but I think where we're all at right now is we know we need to we need to we have to have the conversation it's it's inevitable and you, and you know what our children are learning yes. whichever whether we have the conversation or not because of just uh the, the, the access to information through internet and social media and the news and, and uh, they are interacting with their friends and they are learning. So I feel like as parents, we have to be proactive yes. to, to, uh, to, to be right in there with them. Yes, absolutely. And, and somehow, whatever way possible, to shape what they are learning. Absolutely. Because, you know, they, they are... They are growing up. I mean, I, I'm looking at, I still remember when my ch children were little and it just looks, it feels like just the other day. Absolutely. And now I have a 24 year old uh, and I have a, a 16 year old and I have those ages in between. Yeah. And like, when, how, how, when did this happen? Yeah. And uh, as experiences of uh, life have, sh have shaped them mm -hmm. to be who they are today. So, so I just we have to be we have to do the best we can to get in front totally. of of of, uh, of some of the issues that they are dealing with. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. It's funny. I I've been watching uh, a lot of speeches and in, in uh, YouTube videos from a lot of uh, Navy SEALs and yeah. people in the military and things like that. And there was something that somebody shared in a in a speech that they were giving that I thought was so. Uh, important, and they were talking about it in the context of what it looks like to function as a soldier. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's it's so crucial, and it's actually really relevant to this conversation. And it's he said, you know, when we train, we train so that we know how to respond, not yeah. react. We know how to respond, not to react. Exactly. Yeah. He said yeah. the worst thing that yeah. you can do yeah. is react, because usually when you react, you're so flustered, you're so all over the place, yeah. and typically you won't make the best decision. Yeah. He said, so we train so that we know how to respond and not, when the moments happen not, not and react, not just react. Not react. And he said, it's much healthier and it's much safer to do that. And I was just thinking about that as you yeah. were sharing, because I agree with you 100%. We need to get in front of these conversations so that yeah. we can respond and not just react. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I was reading um, the story of uh, young Timothy in, in, in the Bible and uh, I think when Paul was writing to him in 2 Timothy, he must have been like a 40-year-old man at that time. And Paul reminds him his own journey. 
and tells him in 2 Timothy 3, 15, he's like, you know, Timothy, I remember how from infancy mm. you learned the scriptures. In other words, Timothy, your parents, mostly was his, his, his mom and his grandma, got in front exactly. and, 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 and trained him and gave him the, the scriptures from infancy. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you can start from infancy and maybe as a parent you're thinking, you know, I, 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 I wish I knew. I, I, didn't, I didn't start from infancy and now my children are, are adults. Uh, but I want to remind you of the Chinese proverb that says, you know, uh, when is, uh, you know, the best day to fl- plant a tree? 20 years ago. Mm. And the second best day to plant a tree? Right now. That's so, so good. So you can start yeah. right now. Absolutely. So you're never late. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You're never late. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that's huge for all of us to understand because yeah. I, I know for me and my kids are only, like I said, eight and 10. There's been, definitely been moments throughout this process where I'm like, man, I wish I had already said this. Yeah. But I think it's very tempting and the enemy will even use that to keep us from starting. Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah. I think that's great for us to be challenged with that. It's okay if today is yes. your first conversation. It's okay. Be excited that today is the first conversation, yeah. but have the conversation. Yeah. yeah. Don't, don't wait. Yeah. Because as crazy as it is, and maybe, maybe I'm going too far with this, odds are our children have experienced a glimpse of this already in yes. their lives. Yes. Like I was thinking the other day that – you know, my family with the whole quarantine, we're like, we're going to get outside and be more active. And, and the other day, we just went for a bike ride and a run. And we were running down the street around our house. And we turned, and there was somebody that was standing uh, on the corner with a sign that said Black Lives Matter. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And it was great because in that moment, both of my kids saw it. And they said, oh, why, why was that person standing there? What, what did that sign mean? What, what, yeah. What? And it was like okay, we're going to have this conversation. Yeah. You know, and, and this is, and that's another thing that I was, I was feeling is really, really important. Like we said, you know, we joke about having the conversations at the dinner table, but I think one of the things I've experienced, and I'm sure you have as well, is that a lot of times these conversations happen when you least expect them yeah, to happen. It's when you're driving. Exactly. It's, it's, you're uh, riding a bike. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're in the you're car. You're walking. Exactly. You're in the stall. Exactly. Yeah. And so I think like for, for us as parents, we need to recognize that let the, the conversations happen when they happen. Yes, be intentional to say, okay, I'm going to pursue these conversations, but be ready for those follow-up conversations and whenever they happen, have them. So I'm, I'm, looking, at two, I'm looking at two things here, uh, Rob. I'm thinking about what are uh, the, 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 in the proactive conversations yeah. I need to have. And uh, I think part of it is um, doing the best I can to introduce and teach my children the word of God. Yes, that absolutely. that has to be like standard, because mm-hmm. the Word of God has dis- discusses all these issues of mm. race in different yes. in different ways. Absolutely. I mean, it's from Genesis starts talking about you know equality of um, you know of all people. We are all created in the image of God. Yes. And talk about that imago day, like you absolutely. know whether you're black, white, brown, that you're created in the image of God, and and talk about that, and um, and then. I, I see the other level is uh, the processing of experiences. Absolutely. Uh, that uh, they go through. Like my children have gone through uh, very uh, mild, but also very extreme experiences. You mm. know, I've had, um, you know, one of my, my, my children, uh, you know, uh, was repairing his bicycle on the sidewalk uh, uh, near our home. And before he knew it, he had police around him. Mm. And because, uh, you know, someone had called the police that there's some suspicious uh, uh, looking character on my, on my neighbor, in my neighborhood. And mm. the police came and, and uh, that, that, that was a difficult situation for, 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 for my, my children. Absolutely. Because it's like, man, why, why, did they, why did the police come? And they realized that Man, it says something about the black skin in America. We, we did not go through uh, that kind of experience in Kenya, but we, we, when we moved into 
that particular predominantly white neighborhood, we started experiencing those things. Uh, we experienced, uh, you know, uh, my children experienced police following them uh, more than suspiciously, mm. and um, and just and being treated differently. Mm. So, so we've had conversations about you know just how to prepare them to when they interact when they are pulled over. These are the things you do. Yeah. How to uh, like you like you know we've had developed a, a soft heart. And a thick skin mm. because you're gonna go through some something, some you're gonna go through these issues. And uh, uh, there's been crying, there's been uh, grieving, there's been yelling, there's been, you know, all of that. Mm -hmm. And I don't know whether I've done a good job, but I just feel like, you know, I have to pray a lot and do what needs to be done and, and, and affirm them and tell them that you are created in God's image. Mm, absolutely. Uh, so that's, that's some, some yeah. of the things that... I think uh, that's awesome. Yeah. And I think, again, not to, not to keep making the same point, but even what you just said, yeah. you're having those conversations with your family yeah. and with your kids. And you're pointing them to God's word. Yeah. And I think if we can understand that as parents... And, and I'll even take it a step further because it is Father's Day. Yeah. Dads, if we can spearhead and steer and initiate the conversations with our kids about God's word, who he has created us to be, yeah. and how he has called us to live, yeah. I believe with all my heart that God will change us from the inside out. I mean, if you think about it, you can't read... God's word without seeing the diversity. It's, you, you it's, yeah, it's if, there. If you, if you, yeah. if you don't, you're, you're not really reading and understanding what you're reading. And the thing that I love about God and God's word is that as you read through it, God does not speak and create uniformity. He creates unity, unity through the diversity. Amen. The Amen. Bible is not about uniformity. God's Amen. not saying, I want every Christian to be white or black or green or orange. I want them to have long hair and blue eyes and this and that. Yeah. It's not anything like that. God wants us to see that he has created each of us with such diversity and we are so uniquely made, all in his image. Yes, yes, yes. But we are not all created to look, act, talk, and feel the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think sometimes, I, I don't know about you, but I think the tension that, that I manage as a father in trying to have these conversations with my kids is almost that we try to say, okay, I don't want my kids to see color or I don't want them to yeah, see that yeah. there's people that are different than them yeah. or that there's diversity. Yeah. And I think, and I remember Patsy shared this in the very beginning of this whole series, and I couldn't agree more that, that we have to allow and teach our kids to see the amazing beauty in the diversity of the body of Christ. Because if we are not, we are not allowing them to see the amazing talent and, and power that God has in his man, creation. Man, when you talk about color, again, I look <laughs> at my family. I am, I am like black, like really, really black. Yeah. So I like, I, I use, I, I usually say, you know, I'm well done. If you think about steak, this, this dude is well done. And then I have my wife <laughs> who is a mix of white and black. And then our kids range from black to brown. Yeah. So we have, color and and it's not just color in terms of their skin color they are also you know when we go back to kenya we, we, they're usually asked what tribe are you mm. wow and it's it's it used to throw them off and we're trying to help them to understand that you know it it's you are a unique creation of god that's right and uh, you're becoming global citizens mm. because we, I mean, we have been in Kenya, we lived in Uganda, and then now we are in the U.S. So they have all this 
are diverse experiences. And, um, and sometimes it can create a sense of misidentity. Mm. And you have to go back to the scriptures and, and, and look at the experiences that, uh, and help them to, to, to appreciate the experiences That's they've right. been through. Like, this is your story. Yes. So appreciate your story. Yes. You should not be ashamed and embarrassed that, that you were brought up in this location at this time. This is your story. That's right. And, and, and appreciate that story. Mm. But then also do the best you can as a parent to uh, help your children enter into other, other, the stories of others. Absolutely. Like uh, uh, I, I learned, um, someone told me that, you know what, Noel, how about if you invite some white people into your home? Hmm. We call it a controlled uh, uh, experiences. So they engage in a controlled environment. So Just invite some white people in your home. So, so we've been, I mean, we already have a white person in our home. My wife is half, grandfather was white. So they already knew that. Mm. But just, you know, so we, we used to invite people to come to our homes and we still do so that they are able to engage mm. with, with, with a different people yeah. to help them yeah. to, to understand. I think that's something we need to do Absolutely. Yeah. Now, can I ask you a question? Yes, yes. When you made that conscious decision yes. to uh, engage in that way, did your kids know that that's why you were doing it? No, I, I, didn't, I, I didn't tell them Exactly. That. It, was just, it was just like... Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. I think, yeah, I, I I think just, that's fantastic yeah. because, even, again, I think sometimes we tend to think, okay, I want my children to experience diversity. Yeah. So I'm going to put, sadly, sometimes we'll say, I'm going to put them yeah. because we're afraid to go there ourselves. Yeah. So I'm going to put them in a diverse experience, but that's not wrong. I don't, I don't believe, although I wish we would be able to go together to do yeah. that. Yeah. But I think sometimes we think, all right, let me explain to them ahead of time. Okay, guys, we're going to go into this place and every, and people are going to look different than you and they might talk different than you and they might act different than you, but it's going to be okay. And, and I understand the heart behind that. And I'll be honest, I've, I've been guilty of that a lot in my life with my kids. But I think the, the better way to approach it is to live a life where we all embrace the diversity. Because that's what it is, Pastor Exactly. Harold. Because look, uh, it, it is the normal life. Yes. In other words, your kids and my kids are going to interact with people different from them. Yes. Regardless. Exactly. And so this control environment helps them to, 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 to have a, a, a controlled experience that you can process with them. Exactly. And it's, it's not like after the white people have left your house, you say, okay, so what did you learn? Mm -hmm. No, you just, you just let life flow. Exactly. Yeah. And exactly. you say, hey, today I want to, dad, where did you go today? Well, remember, remember, we invite, remember Pastor Rob who, who was here last week and had dinner with us? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to meet him today for a... We, we are discussing, uh, uh, you know, things of, oh, dad, say hi to him. Mm -hmm. You know, them watching those kinds of interaction, yeah. you know, uh, helps them to, to grow in appreciating and, ex and, uh, and um, uh, appreciating the fact that those people who are different from us, they are also the same. That's right. Like they're, they're also Absolutely. people like us. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. They're different, but they're like us. Yes. So we are the same in many ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I was reminded of, um, this is a little bit different, but um, hopefully it will connect. John 4. Yeah. When, yeah. When yeah. Jesus goes and talks to the Samaritan woman. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of times we read that and we think, okay, uh, well, it was a big deal because he was talking to a woman, which yeah. it was, but he was breaking all different cultural, oh. racial, oh, every man. kind of barriers. Yeah, he... and, I, and I love that when he goes and he does this, he doesn't announce to anyone that he's doing it. No. He doesn't announce that he's going to, you know, to his disciples, hey, I'm going to go talk to this Samaritan woman. Yeah. He lives his life 
the way that he was called that's to live. That's how he lives his life, right? And that's why he engaged with that woman. Not yeah. because he wanted to show, although he was showing, that, okay, we, we are going to all have unity through this diversity, but because that was his heart yeah. to put himself and surround himself with the diversity of the body of Christ. Yeah, yeah. And I love how it says that, what, you know, he goes and he has that conversation with a woman and it's such a powerful conversation. And the disciples come back and they're like, Whoa, what's, what's going what's on? Go- exactly. <laughs> they're, they're like, they didn't even say anything. They just, you know, it caught that they just, yes. they just watched him. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, I, and I think that for us as dads, as yeah. parents, as moms, as, as just people that are, that are raising children, we need to model our lives, not by announcing it, but by living it. By yeah. intentionally saying, yeah. I am going to embrace the diversity yes. and the beauty of the body of Christ yeah. and surround myself with it. Yeah. Yeah, there's a, a phrase, I, I know I've said it to you a bunch before, but it was at my, chiro- it's at my chiropractor's office and, and it's on a, on a picture on a wall. And it says that it's much easier to raise healthy children than to fix broken adults. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> Let me say that again. Okay. <laughs> it's much easier All to right. raise healthy children than I, fix I, I, broken I, I need, adults. I need to sit with that. <laughs> right? Me I too. Need, I need to sit I, with I've that. I've been sitting with it for a few years yeah. now. And yeah. I think it's very relevant to this conversation. Yeah. Because if we as parents can yeah. make the decision to embrace and surround ourselves with the diversity of the body of Christ and see it as beautiful and model that to our children now. Yeah. Think of how different their perspective will be when they are older. You know, um, I'm thinking of a story in the Bible when you talk about modeling. A story of this young man called Joseph. Mm. Uh, His dad, Jacob, and, uh, and, uh, and his uncle, so Jacob and Esau were brothers, and they had this big fight mm. when, when they were kids, you know, the Bible. And, and, and Esau wanted to kill Jacob because of whatever family yeah. issues happened. Yeah. So Jacob uh, ran away from home and, you know, went and uh, settled somewhere else. He got married and he had kids. One of them was Joseph. And, uh, and then one day the Lord told Jacob, you need to go back home. Mm. Going back home meant you need to go and uh, interact with the history that you left behind, which was a very ugly history. I mean, you're going to interact That's with, right. uh, you're, you're going to face mm. Esau. That's right. Yeah. Sometimes God is calling us to go back and face That's right. some of the issues of the past. Yes. And just, it could be very, anyway, so, so Jacob and Joseph and his family, they go back. And, uh, and, and Joseph was there uh, when Jacob and Esau met. Mm. And he watched the brothers hug and kiss mm. and forgive each other. He watched that. You know, when you read the story of Joseph, the story ends with uh, Joseph, this nice guy. Uh, but his life was not always very nice. You know, his brothers, his brothers also hated him. Yeah. They threw him in the pit. They sold him. Uh, they wanted to kill him. They didn't like him very much, so they, they, they got rid of him. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he forgave his brothers one day when he met them. Mm. I wonder where he learned that from. Yeah. I think he, he learned that mm. when he watched Un- Uncle Esau and dad, uh, Jacob, embrace and forgive. Wow. You know, and Oof. the story ends with Joseph forgave his brother. So I, wish I, could, I wish I could just read that mm. passage. Let me just read it. Go ahead. Uh, I think it's in uh, Genesis chapter 50. Uh, I know we are out of time almost, but dad, please just stay with us. Let me read from just Genesis 15 from verse 18. This is after J- J- uh, Jacob had died and Joseph's brothers were afraid. In verse 18, it says, His brothers then came, threw themselves down before him. We are, your sub- we are your slaves, they said. But Joseph said to them, Don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? 
You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good mm. to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then, don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. Like he spoke kindly to the people who had uh, mistreated him, That's people right. who wanted to kill him, who threw him in the pit. Mm. Where did he learn that from? When he saw his dad and uncle model forgiveness mm. and friendship. So and good. I think that um, our kids are watching. Mm -hmm. kids, my kids are watching how I'm treating you. Mm. And your kids are watching how you're treating me. Right. Your kids are listening to the conversations I'm having on our dinner table about you and about white people. And that is shaping them. Mm. Will they, will my children, uh, because of how tr uh, raised them, become like Joseph? Yeah. Be men and women of a thick skin like Joseph and a tender heart. That's right. And I, that's for me, that's what I pray. Mm. That regardless of what they will go through, they will always be a forgiving generation. That's right. Yeah. Can I ask you another question? Yes, please. I know I'm putting you on the spot, and I know it's not supposed to go that way. But, <laughs> but I, was just, I was just thinking, as, and I know we're out of time, and, and hang with us, everybody, because I really think these are important conversations. Yeah. But, you know, if you, if you had to give one practical piece of advice to the mom and the dad, because I think for some of us, it's overwhelming to think, how do I even start these conversations? Yeah. And... And I appreciate so much that you've shared how you've had these conversations already. Can you give one practical conversation starter to somebody who has kids in your ages and stages that you've used at, in your family to help initiate a conversation? Uh, I mean, there have been, uh, you know, from extreme uh, situations to just the normal daily life situations. Like... Uh, I told my children one day, you know, I was traveling to the U.S. One of those early days I was traveling to America and I went, I was staying with a, a white family and they had a little girl. Actually, it's somewhere around here still. The little girl right now is 15 years old mm. and she's just incredible. She had this little girl and she had never really interacted closely with a black person. And I'm now I'm in their home. Mm. And she, she came and was looking at my hand and she would touch it and find out, you know, that's this. <laughs> it's not coming off. It's not coming <laughs> off. And, and then she just looked at me and, uh, and, uh, and the parents were like, no, don't do that. It's like, no, let us, let's stay in this mm. moment because this is a great moment because mm -hmm. she's just experiencing something. Yeah. Yeah. And so I told I, I, tell my, I told my children those kinds of stories, mm. like, hey, uh, do you know I was in this place and I met this person and this, this kid was so... That's great. And, and I realized that uh, she was just really trying to figure out, to, 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 she was curious mm. about this person who is different. I said, and even you guys, you will meet people who are different from you. And it's okay to be curious. Mm, that's great. And it's okay to ask questions, even if it's awkward yeah. and uncomfortable. Because yep. sometimes we are trying to, we try to protect our kids mm -hmm. uh, and we want to protect them and also prepare them. Totally. Yep. It's, Absolutely. It's, it's protect them by letting them experience this. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 That's so good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's great. I think... The intentionality, I believe with all my heart, is what God's going to honor. It's so important. You know, we talk, you talked about John, John 4. Jesus was very intentional. Uh, uh, John says he had to go. Yes. He had yes. to go. And we need to have that. We Absolutely. have to go there. Exactly. Yeah. We have to have had to go to. He had to go to yeah. Samaria. Absolutely. And we have to go there. Yes. We have to. Yeah. Yeah. Whether you, whether you know what to do or you don't know what to do, mm -hmm. go there and be awkward. Exactly. Yeah. E e embrace, <laughs> embrace the awkward. Yeah. Right? I, think, I think we have to be willing to do that. Yeah. You know, I was thinking like wow. even, even dads, you know, again, because it's Father's Day. And I just really believe with all my heart that there's so much power that will take place for us as, 
as a family when when dads we can initiate these conversations. Yes, yes. And whether you're a dad or a mom, it's always going to be significant to initiate the conversation. But let's be honest, it's intimidating at times yeah. to initiate the conversation. And you know, as you were sharing about with the conversations with your kids, I I was reminded that you know, for in our family because my kids are are younger again, I found sound like a broken record, 8 and 10, but the initiation of the conversations looks a lot different for for them in this stage of life. And, um, you know, we like to have uh, a family movie night uh, yeah. every Friday. Yeah. And uh, a, a few months ago, we threw on uh, the movie Remember the Titans. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> I, it was I figured, oh, it'll be good because my son loves sports. Yeah. So it'll be a good, not even, again, how oblivious I am, not even connecting, like, the real point of that movie yeah. is the reconciliation. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so we threw this movie on, and afterwards, my son and my daughter had questions. And they were like, wait, why? Why are they not treated the same? Why is, are they yeah. fighting? Why? Yeah. And it was like, oh, okay, we're having this conversation now. Yeah. Like it's yeah. happening right now. And so, you know, maybe if, if as parents, if we're like, I don't know if my kids are ready for me just to walk up and be like, so did you see what's happening with the no, whole just... Black Lives Matter movement? You're right. And, and as parents, we know our kids best, but maybe throw on a movie let let the let the ice be broken in a very non-threatening way. Yeah, let that speak yeah, to them. Yeah. I, like I said, Remember the Titans was a great one for us if your kids are in that age. We just watched another one last Friday. It's kind of old, but my wife found it, but it was called I believe it was called The Color of Friendship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, again, it was another one of those movies that that the kids had they wanted to unpack it when they were done. And I was so grateful afterwards because it helped disarm the conversation and we could just talk as a family. Yeah. You yeah. know? And, and, and some, of those, some of those movies can even open up uh, an opportunity. Like for us, uh, we are also new in America. So it's, we are learning uh, the history mm. of, of America. So it's opening up an opportunity for us to, as parents, to go dig in and ask, what are, what's, what's the history of this country? Yes. What's this 400 years of yes. slavery? Where did it come from? And wh wh why, why is the, the, the anger so intense? Mm -hmm. And uh, what are these, what's going on? And, and I think it's important that we, we, we go into, we educate ourselves. Yes. I know there's a lot out there. Absolutely. But, but go research and, yeah. and and, and do what you got to do. Mm -hmm. um, I know we can't stop Pastor Rob. I, I know. Just, just, no. <laughs> two pastors and two mics. We're, yeah. we're destined so, for hours so I think I think my mouth, I'm now going to shut my mouth. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> shut the Bible. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. It's okay. We got it memorized anyway. Yeah, we, we have it memorized. We don't need it open. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, uh, but so, would it be okay? I, I think it would be really good if we could just pray yeah just pray and pray just, for for that dad out there yeah. who is just you know listening to us and wondering i don't even know what to do or maybe you're going through your own uh, struggles and you're like I, I am messed up inside and i don't want to pass that to my kids man yeah. i think pray for that dad pray mm. for that mom yeah pray for that grandma pray for that kid who yeah. never really had a dad yep. And he's, you know, you're saying happy Father's Day and they're like, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. So thanks. Yeah. Let's, yeah. let's pray. Uh, Lord, I just thank you so much. I thank you that you did not make us all the same, mm. that we are uniquely created in your image. And I thank you that that we have the opportunity to see the diversity and the beauty in your body. Father, these conversations are so, so difficult. Hmm. We would be liars if we sat up here and said, it's so easy to just talk to your kids about these things. Hmm. Father, these are some of the most difficult conversations we can have as parents, but they're some of the most necessary. Hmm. And so, Father, I pray that as moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas and aunts and uncles and everyone in between, hmm. that we would have the courage to embrace the awkwardness at times. Yes, Lord. That we would have the courage 
to start the conversation, even though we know we're ill-equipped to have it. Hmm. I pray that we would never shrink back from teaching and modeling to our kids the incredible gift you've given us through the body of Christ. Hmm. Father, I pray, I pray for the dad right now that is feeling the stirring in his heart to have a conversation. Hmm. And Lord, like, like you said in your word for, for the disciples, don't be afraid because when you open my, your mouth, my spirit will speak through you. I will give you the words. Hmm. Hmm. And so for every dad, for every mom, for every person that is initiating these conversations in their families and in their circles today, I pray for the strength and the confidence to know that when they open their mouths, your spirit will give them the words to say. Father, I thank you that, that we're not going to get it perfectly. Because if we did, we wouldn't put our eyes on you. And so, Lord, I pray that as we go through these conversations, we would recognize our need for you and your wisdom and your discernment. But, Father, give us the courage to start today. Yes, Lord. Give us the courage to raise healthy children yes, Lord. that see your face that know your voice and love your children. Mm. Father, we thank you for this time. Yes. We thank you for these conversations. Mm. We pray that you would do with them far more than we could ever do on our own. Mm. But above all of that, we pray that you would be honored and pleased by them. Yes. Father, where our words fail us, see our hearts mm. and be honored by them, Lord. Mm. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, wow. Thank, <laughs> thank you so much, man. No, thank you. That yeah. definitely didn't go the way I thought it was going to go today, but I hope this was, this was something that was beneficial for all of yeah, us. I know it was I, for me. It was for me, and I, I hope there's a takeaway for you. For you. And uh, if you have any questions, please reach out to Absolutely. us. And uh, uh, I don't know whether we have the answers, but we'll have a conversation. <laughs> we'll okay? figure it out together. We're yeah. all in this together. Yeah, so, hey. Go ahead and have the conversation with your, ch with your children, with your families, okay? God bless you and have a, an amazing week. Amen. Happy yeah. Father's Day, everybody. Okay, bye now.